Guess what? I reached a thousand subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Carl, the eighth wonder of the world. What's happening? It's your boy, Mia West Cone, a.k.a. the Ohio Silverback. The eighth wonder is here. Let me tell you something, man. Yo, small victories mean a lot. I hit a thousand subs. Now, again, I always say, I know that ain't a lot. You know what I'm saying? But for me, y'all don't know the true history of me trying to do what I'm doing. That's 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 a, a ton for me right now. Now we only need is 99,000 more. Come on, how we gonna do that? Let's help. Help me, man. Let me get 99,000 more. So anyway, man, that shit, you know, that, it's dope. It's dope, man. And, and like, as you can see through my videos, man, I don't edit out the, what would be considered the outtakes. I laugh through that. It's so fun, man. It, it truly is so fun. All right, get to the point. Thanks, everybody, for the comments, for the subs, for the shares, anything you do. Make sure you follow me also on Midwest underscore calm. On Instagram, make sure you go to hyphylife.com. Promo code calm. Get you something. I know you can use something. You got all great products. You got great, great merch. What, what you mean? Come on, man. Do get something. Anyway, martial arts history. I'll go back to the origin of me. I used to be an asshole, uh, fighting. That just I'm just keep it real. Run around fighting. I was in you know bar scene, bouncer, all that goofy ass shit. Long story short, almost lost my life. Seeing people lose their life. My buddy Scott Marshall literally died falling in my arms. Very, 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 very distant past that I'm glad I'm over. However, everything happens for a reason. Like I always say, everything happens with a purpose. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know. So anyway, um, got, in a, got into mixed martial arts, got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. How I got into it, man, I, I look, I thought I can whoop everybody. Until I was very much so humble. And that's the problem with today's world. Let me just touch on this real quick. The reason why we have so much gun violence and shit like that. Like, I know people don't want to hear this. But I'm going to just be honest. I'd rather people do get out in the street and go home. Patch your shit up. You know. Get your tooth fixed. But at least you're not going home in a casket. At least ain't nobody wearing your name on a shirt. You know what I'm saying? Do that shit out and take your punk ass home. If that's what we're going to do to stop the violence. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? But... That's not what it is today. A lot of people is afraid of that humility. That's that's the thing with me, man. I don't care. Like, I don't have any humility when it comes to that. When you're a competitor, you know there's going to be that day. So you prepare to win everything, but you're going to have to be also to be able to mentally prepare to lose as gracious as you win. I don't think I'm in top shape. This is how I feel. I don't think I can be beat. But yeah, we're supposed to feel that way. But if I do, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna humiliate me. You know what I'm saying? I just lost. So, a lot of the violence we deal with today is because people truly don't want that humiliation. It's easier to do this or this. I, man, I just wasn't, I just wasn't, that never was me. So, anyway, I met a guy, Brian Sonnery. But before I met him, I met a guy, Eric Wilson, who was more my size. He was a, you know, study Shaolin Kung Fu. He also was a kickboxer. He had minimum grappling. So we started training at um, a place at the university called the ROTC for the, for the Army, military, whatnot. And it was just me and him. We were just being there banging. And, you know, I, I came I came from boxing. So, and let me, let me just be clear because somebody else asked me this. I'm not a boxer. Do I got boxing techniques? Yes, I got I got good technique when it comes to boxing, right? I got all that. Let it touch and go. I got all that. That's cool. However, let me tell y'all something about the sweet science. It's called science because one of the biggest pieces of boxing is footwork. I don't have good footwork for boxing. I have good footwork for mixed martial arts because I was a takedown artist. So, a boxer, get in there. Yeah, I look good in there, you know, throwing them good, them good shots. But the footwork... They dance circles around me. That's a fact. Mixed martial arts, I still different. You know what I'm saying? I was more prepared for the, you know, shoot and go. So it's just different, guys. So don't don't ever think that when I say boxer, 
that I'm on a level of any of these top amateurs, because I'm not. Um, they footwork, man, they dance circles around me. Man. That's like Michael Jackson dancing with, you know, some <laughs> some dude at a high school prom, man. He couldn't dance with that guy. Remember Justin Timberlake and them got on stage with Michael Jackson? They couldn't keep up with that guy, man. So, now, they look good dancing. They might have some good moves, but they ain't jackal. So, yeah, I can throw hands, man. I do have very good punching technique. I do have very good head movement, but I'm not a boxer. So, anyway, he was working striking. So, he was working on me, you know, defending kicks and things like that. And we would dabble with the grappling. Fast forward. Met Brian Somry. Brian Somry's probably 170 pounds. He would submit me every fucking time he went out. He was a badass technician. Went from there, met a guy, Deion Thompson's, and the rest is history. These Both these gentlemen are smaller than me. One is 6'6", six, six, one is 5'6", one is 6'6", six, six, 200, one is 5'6", um, 170, and I'm 5'8", 230. So it's two guys that is very much smaller than me that I couldn't do shit with. After I did that, bro, I, it was over with. I, I needed to know jujitsu. It was a wrap. So I wanted to, I was so indulged in jujitsu, man, that I wanted to compete every time. It was times that we were competing. And this is way back then. This is before the IBJJF. This is for all these cool things that they got now that these guys are making a living doing. We didn't have none of that, man. We was renting cars, vans. We was going to these places, man, and just competing, man. And I've competed against some really, really good guys back in the day. Um, Jeff Munson, uh, I can't even go, this is like, we was going to Grappler's Quest, which is on the East Coast mainly, and then Nagas was real big back in the day. So I was competing against these tough guys, man, and it was, I was only like a year in, but I loved it so much, so I just wanted to compete to get better. I used to train, I hated training with people that was new. I always wanted to train with the upper belts. Back then, if you was a purple belt, to a white belt, you was a black belt, because there wasn't many, many purple belts around. The two guys, when I first started training with them, they was blue belts. So I was like, oh, man, they, they, they got a color on their belt, you know? Um, then I got introduced to judo. I love judo, man. Oh, It is almost, and I know I'm going to sound crazy saying this, it is almost intoxicating getting a good-ass throw. Oh. I know, I know I sound crazy. I know. Getting the good ass throw, man. The, a throw that a flat e palm, bam! Oh my goodness, that shit gives me chills even thinking about it. Same with wrestling. Oh my god, a good duck under, a good double leg, a good single, man. But something about that that smack with judo, and I was vicious. I mean, I say was because I still compete. Let's get over this COVID shit. I mean, I just competed two years ago, won uh, state championships at. Uh, uh, super heavyweight, but there's something about that. That bam, hitting your opponent with the earth is what they say. Oh man, love it. So I got so engaged in it, man. I just wanted to compete, wanted to compete, wanted to compete. Jujitsu has a very, very dark side, and one of it is it can be very political, which I don't understand that shit at all. It can be very catty. You know what I mean? And people could abuse the power of being gay, upper belt, etc. Certain certain cultures are built around jiu-jitsu at some times that is very uneasy. Um, having cliques within the, you know what I'm saying, within the academy, I think it's corny as fuck. Um, even though everybody calls themselves brothers and, you know, family and all that shit. But some cultures are built very, very much different. This ain't everybody. So don't take offense to what I'm saying. But some, a lot of y'all know this shit is true. You can't call me family. But I'm only good for you when I'm competing. Or when the tuition is paid. Or shit like that. Or when I'm doing something for you within an academy. And a lot of jujitsu places operate on that, on that level. And I'm going to tell you something, man. Like For me, where I come from, dude. I can't take shit like that. Because... When you grew up in a certain place and you see a lot of shady shit in a neighborhood and, and see shit going down, it's like when you want to get out of that, you expect somebody to actually that say they love you, that say you family to actually fucking act like that. And when they don't act like that, it's very disappointing. So me, I get two of my feelings about shit. Like, 
if you say you family, you say I'm your fam and I'm this and I'm that. And I'm my 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 personality, my heart carries value to you. I got your back, man. Straight up, I got you. Like no bullshit. Like can't nobody say nothing bad about you. Can't nobody do nothing to you. Boom. And anybody who I'm around would tell you that. I've never turned my back on nobody. You can call them. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. When I start seeing a shift in academies like that, I just don't want nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that dude. I'm not about to kiss nobody ass on a belt. Never did, never will. I'm a black belt now. But never did, never will. My black belt road to my black belt was very, very, very long. Due to the fact that I'm just not that dude. Nobody can talk to me crazy. I respect you because you're a black belt. I respect you because this is your academy. But at the end of the day, we're men. And I will be treated as a man the same way I'm treating you as a man. And jujitsu don't mean shit outside of your academy doors. If nobody knows what jujitsu is, they think it's fucking karate. So how cool are you really if you're just a black belt in jujitsu when you're an asshole? You're not cool. Because most people won't even train jujitsu. Most people don't even know what it is. So if you're an asshole and you train jujitsu and you're a black belt and you got 12 world titles, guess what? The world don't give a fuck about you. And that's why a lot of these people box themselves in to only being accepted in those arenas. Listen, I'm a children's book author, man. Douchemanagement.com. Go there, the new kid, ages K through four. I'm a children's book author. I'm proud of that. I started a movement called I Stopped the Bully in 2011. Went around speaking to schools, colleges. I'm proud of that. I'm a co-owner of the first gym ever on, in Putin Bay, Ohio, Muscle Bay Fitness. I'm proud of that. So if I never did jujitsu again, I'm fine with that too. I do jujitsu because I love it. I'm a martial artist because I love it. You understand what I'm saying? It's not because I want somebody to think I'm fucking cool. It's not because I want to go get girls or start a conversation at some bar to look like the toughest dude there. I don't even like telling people I do jujitsu when I'm out. If I, if the very rare time you'll see me go out, people ask what I do, I'll tell them I play water polo or I play golf or, or a ballerina. Like I don't even like having them conversations because it could turn into something, oh, he's a tough dude, you know what I'm saying? So. I just got unattracted to a lot of things. I had to take a break from it for about a year. I'm not gonna get into personally the 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 affiliates I've dealt with because I think everybody has a place. Um, I think everybody is good. You know what I mean? Like, I think they do a good job. So I'm not gonna get on get into what I have a problem with personally with people because that don't matter. But what I will say is those people that. I, I had to remove myself from. I would love to hear, you know, I would love, I would, I would love to hear somebody say how bad of a person I was to them. Because that's just it. Because I wasn't. You know what I mean? When you tell me, when you say, see, family just don't mean the gee. You understand? When you say family, when you say bro, and a lot of people don't understand, some of the shit that I got involved with in jujitsu took me literally kept me away from doing shit that didn't do me no good so when you call me family and you call me bro that's what the fuck you got you got family you got a bro and if you don't and if that don't mean shit to you then I can't fuck with you now I know people had their disagreements I know people you know misunderstand that's what family and bros do but some of that shit way past that. Cause I, I can see sometimes that word is just is just a cliche in martial arts. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So shout out to everybody who do it who do it right, who do it for the love, who do it because they want to see their students get better, who don't judge their students for not being successful competitors, who accept the students who come in there just because they want to get an exercise in and who actually belt people because they're actually progressing and not because they're kissing your ass or because they're not competing or shit like it's it's, a, it's it's crazy yo it's crazy people pay you man people pay jujitsu academies motherfuckers pay they are customers they are customers man and you can you can add the family aspect to it if you that person if you're not 
Treat them like customers then. At least do that. Don't treat somebody that shit because people won't exist. Jujitsu academies will not exist without a customer. Some of you Jujitsu academies, y'all live great. That's all y'all do for a living. And I'm sure the ones who live like that, they know the value of a customer. They know the value of family because somebody is paying you a tuition, taking away from their family, giving it to you so you can support your bills and your family. I want y'all to think about that. Somebody took a hundred or two hundred dollars, whatever the going prices is in some places now, at least a hundred, taking that from their family to invest in you and what you can do for them. Don't think, don't think for one second that your black belt means more to them than their own fucking family. Be appreciative. And I, anybody, I had to stop running, I had to stop with my Jiu Jitsu Academy because I had other obligations. And owning a gym, especially where I own it at, was a dream. Shout out to all my partners. I love, man, we'll talk about that in the future. But so I had to move away from it. But any of those, my students, none of them will have nothing bad to say about me. I'm on the internet now. I get exposed if, trust me, I'll get exposed if that's what it is. Nobody's saying nothing bad about me. I've communicated with them. I know things happen different. All my children, kids, class, they grown as hell, old as hell now. But I communicate with parents still. Nobody said no. Because I love this shit, man. I love it so much that I got to step away from it sometimes. Just to gather myself so I won't completely walk away. Sometimes I got to take a break from it. Because again, certain things mean a lot to me. Those words, family and bro, mean a lot to me. And if that's not how it's reciprocated, then I got to get the fuck out. But on the bright side, you meet the dopest people in the world to on Jiu-Jitsu, man. Even in competition, you meet the, like, the coolest motherfuckers in the world. And look, like I said... I know nowadays, man, you know, people, people in Jiu-Jitsu move the goalposts. You had to win this tournament to be respected. Well, then this new tournament, because you got to win that one. Now you got to win this one. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about all that, man. I don't. I want to compete at the highest level as a black girl. Absolutely. I want to compete just because I want to compete against them guys that I know is in my division, that I know compete at that level all the time. Not because I care. I just want to challenge myself. Like, I just, that's what I want. I want to get out there with the top. Absolutely. So, I I just developed a whole different mentality when it comes to this. It's solely for love now. Before, I loved doing it, but I was just a, I want to kill, you know what I'm saying? Now, I just love it so much. And I'm just blessed that I got two hands, two feet. And some people don't, and they still successful in jiu-jitsu. But I'm just blessed that I'm able to be able, physically able to go out there. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's all about. I don't care. I don't got no ego in jiu-jitsu no more. That was way back as a blue belt. Now, it's just physically able to take my ass out there and compete. Judo. Judo is uh, it's hard for me to train judo because I'm 40, dude. And I know people like that's young. But, man, when your body kind of, you know... Lifting weights and training, wrestling, jujitsu, those things are tough, man. So my body, when you train judo, if you knew, looked up what judo was, judo is a very rough sport. They all are, but judo, man, you gotta fall, man, you take them hits, you gotta throw. It hurts throwing. I won um, two judo tournaments, man, and one was called a smoker, and it was one minute goes, and every time somebody got taken down, you had to get up and you had to lock up again. It wasn't no circling and figuring it out. So we had to get up, lock up again, and the winner at the end of that one minute, who had the most throws won. So imagine that going boom, 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 boom. Throwing attempts missed are painful. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifice throws are painful. Your knees, your rhythm, all that shit. So it's tough, but you know, being a two a two art martial artist, man, it, it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing to know how this knowledge and be able to reciprocate it to others. And for me, that's what it's all about, being able to reciprocate it to others, man. Over a decade of experience in two martial arts. That shit is, 
that's just a good skill to have, you know what I'm saying? And then the, the route that I took to do it, the things that I've taken and I'm still here, that's just, it's dope, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, man, it's just that's just me in a nutshell with the martial arts. I love it. I love fitness too. So it's very, it's very close. I think I, I don't think I got one over the other because they both do things for me mentally and physically that I need. You know what I'm saying for for my mental health. Um, just, I just love this shit, y'all. I did. That's all I can say to you. I just really, really love it. Like I study it. Like people who fight mixed martial arts because I fought mixed martial arts. People know. Um, it wasn't from my past of being a quote unquote fighter, meaningless fighter. I kind of lost the urge to hurt somebody, even though it was in a competition. I kind of just didn't feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like punching. And I was a, I was a ground and pound guy. So when I got on top of my fucker, I was going in, you know, and uh, I lost that. Now, don't get it twisted. I will fuck a motherfucker up to defend myself now. That that ain't no joke. But I ain't. It's a difference to defend yourself and actually fighting for no reason. I'll fuck a motherfucker up, dog. I'm not even bullshitting. So I, tr I really stay away from it because that switch is when you a fighter, when you when you a martial artist, you only can do what you know how to do. Yes, you do have control. But if I really had to defend myself and I put somebody in a position to where I'm just going to pound on, I'm fucking you up. That is, that's just the truth, man. People think, again, that's that tough guy shit. People think, oh, you just think you're tough, you know, because you do martial arts. No, motherfucker. You think you're tough because you got a CCW. Having a CCW doesn't make you tough. Being a martial artist also doesn't make you tough. All I'm saying is, it is 2% of the people who do the martial arts that I do and other people do. So if 98% of people don't do it, how in the fuck can you defend yourself against somebody who does? I don't know how to fucking load a gun. I don't know how to shoot. You know what I'm saying? I know you got a trigger, but it's slip with all that shit. I don't fuck with guns. I'm not against them. I'm not one of them take the guns out of here. I'm not against them because it's resp irresponsible gun owners. Period. That's when shit happens. People just get guns irresponsibly. They get them illegally. Yeah, they do dumb shit then. But I listen, if a, if a motherfucker's shooting at me and I'm with somebody, I hope he got a CCW because I don't carry guns. I don't wake up in the morning like, I'm a black belt just jitsu and judo, and then I, I want to kill somebody if somebody, you know, I, no, I wake up in the morning like, that's going to be a good day. I can't wait to get out here and explore and, and make content and go work out. So if you wake up with that attitude, then you's a bitch and you don't need a fucking gun. But if you got a gun, like, man, look, I don't know what will happen, man. These words is crazy today. I'm going to have my pistol, but I don't want to hurt nobody. Then I, res I respect that. But all that other shit, like, I don't want to do jujitsu because I got a gun. I don't need to do, I don't, I don't need to do, what if I smack you in your fucking mouth and you can't get to your gun? Then what? Because some places you can't even carry it. So if I beat your ass, you ain't going to never get to your gun anyway. Like, we got we got to come out that little whack shit, man. I, I That's corny, man. That's, that's corny. I'm sorry. Hope I ain't offended. I actually, I don't give a fuck if I offended anybody with that. Because that's a fuck up ass mentality to have. I've seen people murder, man. So I don't, I was almost murdered, like I said before. I don't want to hear that bullshit of what you going, you don't need to do this because you got a gun. I don't even want to hear that bullshit, man. That's, shut the fuck, fuck out of here. All right, anyway. That's my martial arts and that's my take on martial arts. Truly, truly a blessing, man. Again, to have a 100K, 100K. See, I just spoke that to existence. I'm going to say it again. They have 100K followers. It's only a thousand. Truly blessing that people like my content, man. Like I said, I'm trying. Y'all know I'm new, man. Y'all see somebody complimented on my editing. Thank you, man. I, one day I'll tell you exactly what I use. Um, but that would be when I'll take a level up. Then I'll tell you how I did it. I'll tell you the road to get to that level. So, man, make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. Please hit subscribe. And also, hyphylife.com, promo code Kong. You want anything? I got you. Tell Kylie. His old boy Kong sent you. <laughs> you know the eight wonder. <laughs> Fuck with you, man. Instagram, Midwest underscore Kong. I'm giving out training routines, man. No, I ain't giving them out. They cost and they worth it. Y'all trying to get it right for 2021? Hit me up. If not, I don't know what to tell you. Because at least you could talk to me. You can at least communicate with, your, with the person who gave you the workout. Most of these motherfuckers, you email them and send them money and they're going about their way. 
So, man, thank you for all the love and the support, man. More content coming.